Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we're joined by Saroop Chanja, who is the Executive Director of Product Management at SonicWall. SonicWall helps its customers build, scale, and manage security across cloud, hybrid, and traditional environments, letting customers evolve their secure cloud adoption at their own pace. Saroop joined us today to tell us more about SonicWall and their 2023 Cyber Threat Report. Thank you for coming along, Saroop, and welcome to the jam. Thank you, Tom, for having me in. And really, it's a real pleasure for me to be talking today. Thank you very much. Okay, well, let's begin with a two-part question. SonicWall's threat report shows that malware attacks went up 2%, with surges in IoT malware up 87%. What would attribute to this, and what should organizations do today to completely be in control, considering there are world-class dynamic solutions available, like SonicWall's product stack in particular? Absolutely. So if you look at the threat report, and if you've been following the threat report for the last few years, in fact, this is the first time that the malware count has gone up since 2018, right? For the last few years, four or five years, you know, we've been so inundated with a lot of news and uh, information and awareness and warnings about ransomware and malware, general malware in that sense has actually been a little down. Um, but ransomware has changed, right? Because threat actors are having to change their tactics. Um, organizations are getting somewhat mature. That's the positive part of it. Awareness is growing. That's the positive part of it. But probably the bigger factor also is that there's a lot of environmental factors that are taking the attention away from ransomware, which is causing people to try to think more advanced, more uh, targeted threats that are you know, beyond just ransomware, beyond what a, a classic or even a more modern antivirus technology will be able to detect. Um, and in fact, ransomware by itself isn't really financially profitable anymore. We'll talk about that quite a bit. Um, so a lot of this malware rise is now being attributed to a growth in two areas that we saw in our report, right? One, there's been a 43% growth in crypto jacking attempts, right? Because people are finding that instead of trying to actually hack someone and steal their data, they want to make money through cryptocurrency, then crypto jacking just works perfectly fine. But the other thing is that, you know, and I, I hate to use the, the, word, the term that people have been using all the time, but the pandemic has actually changed the way people work. And not just the fact that there's been remote work and mobility, but it's been an explosion of devices. And so attackers are now trying to target these devices that we'd like to call the IoT devices using IoT malware. And we've seen about a 20% growth in just IoT malware itself, like you said, right? So they're going to come after you. And what we'd rec recommend organizations that are looking to protect themselves should do a, a bunch of different things. One, make sure you're investing in world-class threat detection capabilities, right? And this has to be across layers now. Gone are the days when you can just put in a firewall or just put in a network security thing and expect that people who come into the office are, you know, they're protected and that's great, right? Um, there's been a lot of talk about remote work, hybrid work, people walking and, you know, working from anywhere. Um, but the reality is that the network security hasn't gone away. It is great, but you need to cater for the fact that there are now more endpoints, they're more off the network, and they're now using services that are in the cloud, whether it's email, applications, or anything else, any other resources that they have to get to. So you need protection across network, endpoint, and cloud. And that's where our stack, you know, the combination of the next generation firewall, capture client, and our cloud app security will really help, right? Also, more importantly, start looking more at zero trust frameworks. And what that really means is that you cannot just trust a, a person's device. You cannot just trust the fact that, you know, I'm seeing a login coming from Saroop or from Tom, and well, now I'm just going to give them unlimited access to whatever they need. It has to be verified, it has to be trusted, and it has to be proven to be risk-free based on you know, device posture or based on the fact that you've not seen any suspicious activity from them, because that's what malware attackers are trying to do now. They're trying to go after the fact that we know there are gonna be people logging in from anywhere, accessing resources from anywhere, and if they're authorized users, they just get access to everything. Now, continuing on with the discussion about malware, industry sectors such as education, finance, and retail were hit the hardest by it. What has been your experience in helping clients combat these attacks? And what are some of your recommendations to these industries overall? So I think, you know, the, again, the real positive has been that, again, the pandemic to some extent, but also the fact that there's been a lot more security incidents, malware attacks, ransomware attacks, et cetera, 
has increased awareness and to a large extent has increased security maturity. Clearly, some of the more you know, high security industries like finance, retail, healthcare, you know, they've had invest, have gone and invested in a lot of security technologies. Um, chief information security officers are more conscious about what they deploy, right? But what we're also seeing still continuing is that large enterprises, they tend to overinvest in shiny new toys, right? With attacks, even technologies, products are evolving and they're changing. There's new products every day. I think I saw a visual someday that talks about probably about 800 plus cybersecurity companies that have been probably formed in the last five years. That's insane. And you know they're all coming out with new marketing, a new product that they want to sell. And people go and buy them because they just think this is like the latest thing on the block and let's go do it. But the problem with having so many technologies that creates blind spots and visibility and control. And so this, the reason they also do it is this concept of defense in depth, but that's spiraled in the wrong direction. Defense in depth isn't just about putting multiple vendors in layers. It is really about putting multiple detection capabilities that you, that you can do across layers, right? Now with education, what we've seen is that there's been a greater focus, you know, on child safety and mental health and compliance, right? So all of their security measures are more about how can we make sure the child is safe? How can we comply to the regulatory requirements so that, you know, we can provide reporting? Frankly, a lot of it is also driven by the fact that if you, if you meet those compliance requirements, you get funded. They're not funded. They're, they're typically underfunded, especially public schools, and they get federal subsidies, but they have to meet these compliance requirements for that. So my recommendation, what we have been doing to a lot of other you know, customers in these industries is you know, focus on platforms and consolidation, automation, shared threat intelligence, ease of use, and overall threat detection efficacy. This is what truly beats the shiny new toy any day. People think that we have to get the best of the best of the best for every single technology that we buy. And that, while that is great, it's a noble thought, it actually creates inefficiencies. And what you want to do is to pick the vendor that gives you the best of everything, which is not just the best of protection, but also gives you protection plus the efficiencies that you need in your team to you know, beat the cybersecurity skill challenges that you have, to beat the cost challenges that you have, and also don't generate alert fatigue so that you don't have to need you know, 100 people staring at a screen all day long looking for if something's gone wrong. Now, while ransomware continues to be a threat, researchers from Sonic Wars Capture Labs expect more state-sponsored activity targeting a broader set of victims in 2023, including small to medium businesses and enterprises. Is Sonic War prepared to help its clients? So if you look at the geopolitical landscape, right, I think the biggest event in the last few years clearly has been, you know, the war ravaged situation in in. Eastern Europe, right? So Ukraine, Russia, and that situation that's happening over there. And I think that's really taught us the fact that, you know, we've seen in movies about cyber wars and all those kind of things. That's no longer a thing of the past. It's no longer a thing of just the movies. This is real. And organizations have to be prepared. Countries are not attacking countries. Countries are attacking enterprises and SMBs off a country to cripple the economy. That's their goal. The challenge with state-sponsored attacks is that they have a lot of funding. Right? It's not just like you know, some script kitty is looking to make a bunch of Bitcoins. These are you know, rogue governments or rogue government agencies that are actually paying lots of money to attackers to go and help them evolve faster. And in lots of cases, evolve faster than the evolution of any detection capability as well, especially in the automated space. What we're looking to do is to help, again, help organizations make sure they invest in technologies that protect their users wherever they are. Endpoint protection is really the most crucial piece of this, right? Because if you look at network security, if you look at cloud security, um, all of that you know, helps you protect yourselves in those layers, but the real last line of defense is the endpoint. It is also the spot where if you look at malware attacks by themselves, which is how state-sponsored attacks are happening as well, the maximum visibility, the maximum analysis and te from telemetry, and the maximum control for response is all on the endpoint. Traditional signature-based AVs just isn't enough and behavior detection is now table stakes. And any detection that leverages machine learning capabilities will be able to catch suspicious activity. That's what you need. That's what people call, have called EDR. They call XDR today, but you could call it any DR. It is effectively real-time detection and response. 
Also, you have to look at investing in tools and skills to proactively hunt for these indicators of threat and indicators of attack. Because yes, there's automated threat detection. You think that security could be plug and play for the most part. State-sponsored attacks don't fall in that most part. They are following in that five, falling in that five or 10% that actually don't get detected by a lot of these threats. So you have to be more proactive. And if you do not have the budget to actually build a team in-house, because this isn't easy, it's expensive, you can't find people who can do this, then you should look for managed detection response partners who are what, what the industry calls MDR providers. And make sure that they can capture all the talent that you need to identify threats proactively and will also be able to respond with, within minutes if required to protect you from these threats. Our combination of you know, technologies that we bring across between capture client for our endpoint, the leveraging our capture ATP for deep memory inspection uh, with our RTDMI technology, and the fact that we work with a whole large number of managed security services providers who are providing managed detection response capabilities. That's what really helps our customers be prepared for these things. So with no corresponding slowdown and the proliferation of connected devices and IoT sort of being a way of life today, what sort of attacks can one expect and what threat protection, excuse me, what threat protection solutions should enterprises already have in place? So you're right, right? There is no slowdown and there has been an explosion, um, especially with workers working remote and they're working from home, they're working from wherever they want. I think the biggest part is working from home. You know, people have talked about IoT devices being, you know, a challenge for us. And most of the previous thinking around IoT has been how devices in the workplace are becoming more connected to the internet. But I think the bigger challenge we have is with remote working, every employee is bringing personal devices into the corporate workspace, which is effectively a virtual space. Now it's depermitized completely. So if I'm sitting here with my laptop, I also have a printer that I'm using for printing that's connected to the internet. I might have an Alexa device that's actually connected to the internet that I use for you know, my daily chores, but it is sitting on the same Wi-Fi network that my laptop is connected to, which I use to connect to the corporate network. Attackers know this, and they realize that if they try to go after the corporate, you know, there's probably going to be a bunch of layers to protect them. But which average Joe at home is going to actually be worried about, hey, is my Alexa device secure? Is my Google Home device secure? Is my microwave secure? Is my television secure? Is my Bluetooth speaker secure? Because all of these are now connected to the internet. That's the real internet of the things, the personal devices that are at risk. And they're going after vulnerabilities in these devices. And how do you keep up? I mean, you know, today in the corporate enterprise, you can say, hey, I've got, you know, Windows, I've got um, 7, 8, 10, 11, I've got server versions, these, I've got Linux, I've got Mac OS. It's a relatively finite list of things that you're going to be looking for vulnerabilities for. In the personal space, there's probably like 20,000 different vendors that people could go after. How do you keep up with that, right? So it becomes an individual responsibility to make sure that your network, your workspace is hygienic, right? You have to make sure that, you know, you, yes, you have to keep your devices closed because that's what gives you convenience, but keep the credentials of those devices even closer. Do not set default passwords. Do not just let the admin console be accessible from the internet. That's really, really bad, bad posture to do, right? Credential theft is a real problem. People can just log into your Alexa. Once they log into Alexa, if they get to your laptop, you've lost your credentials. And then security, there's a lot of a lot of security capabilities that will not be able to solve that problem for you, right? Make sure you dis disable any default settings that are existing on these devices. And if you're in a corporate organization, two really important principles. One, you need to gain visibility. Implement technologies like what we have with our capture client called Rogues, where you can identify unmanaged, unauthorized devices on the network. You may not be able to do anything to prevent them from coming on, or you could with using technologies like network access control or NAC. But if you have visibility, it helps you be better prepared for, okay, people are using XYZ vendor, you know, um, I don't know, Amazon or HP or whatever it might be on the network. And I can see, I can start looking out for vulnerabilities for those so that, you know, I'm better prepared for something that happens. But more importantly, for remote work or for in-office work, implement micro-segmentation like firewalls do, right? 
so you can make sure that these insecure devices don't remain on the same network as your corporate devices. They're on like a guest Wi-Fi or something that usually will have restricted access to networks and maybe only just have basic internet access. Well, it has been fantastic to hear more from Sonic Call and your solutions and thoughts on the cyber landscape at the moment. Thank you for joining us on the Jam, Saroop. We look forward to hearing more from Sonic Wall in the near future. Thank you, Tom, and you have a great day.